Hey there, welcome back. Today, I will be amending and clarifying some stuff I said in the past. Uh, some stuff I said was slightly premature. And, okay, so this video will be in two or three parts, roughly. So I've got all these tabs open of, uh, basically, in, in the first part of the video, I'm going to be giving a an educational presentation on coastal morphology and geology and some miscellaneous stuff about uh, coastal formation. Uh, I think some of the stuff I said about the coastlines possibly being artificial, uh, I'm less confident on a lot of that stuff after spending several weeks researching a whole bunch of stuff. And then I'll have a few brief miscellaneous examples like megalithic blocks and ancient sites and stuff like that. And then the second half of the video will be, uh, I'll be going over a whole bunch of moments from my videos. I went through and flagged anything that needed clarification or revoking. And I'll be touching on each one of these examples. So I rewatched all of my videos and I'm rephrasing some stuff and adding some new info in some cases and recontextualizing it in light of all of the coastline morphology stuff I've been researching. And this video is not just retractions. It's a lot of new info too and reinforcements of existing or already presented ideas. So some stuff in this video will strengthen some of the stuff I've said previously and some of it will uh, be somewhat debunked or shown as natural. So don't skip this one because there's a lot of good info both ways. So without further ado. Okay, so let's jump into some basics of coastal morphology and coastal formation. I'll try not to read you every little thing in all of these tabs, but uh, I'll try to abbreviate, but it's worth relaying the information just so we're on the same page and we know that certain things are not in fact artificial. So this is just a overview of basic coastline processes. Uh, all this stuff. <laughs> I read every word of all of these links, all of these pages. Um, so I don't really know if I need to read too much to you. I just, just to let you know that I, well, I should have done this before I made my videos, but better late than never, I guess. Uh, swash and backwash is just the waves going back and forth. Blah, blah. Constructive and destructive waves. Material can either be deposited or eroded. Deposition and erosion. Man, I don't know if I want to show you this whole slideshow. I'm just bragging, basically. <laughs> yeah. I read the whole thing. Um, so these beach ridges. I was going to talk about beach ridges. Um, and I'll, I'll touch on that in a bit but they're basically pretty well understood natural things. And it's already been like almost a month since I did all this research. So I'm, I'm kind of forgetting <laughs> already the, the technical terms and a lot of the, the theory, but after doing the, the research, I'm convinced that for the most part, the beach ridges are fairly natural, or probably entirely natural. Spits are an important thing. They happen pretty quickly, actually. It's just like a, a jet of, of sand, like the formation of a sandbar jetting out. And it's tombolo, that's an important term I'll explain, because uh, it can form these continuous, or I mean very clean curves, which I was saying are, you know, swept, swept, or sweep, sweep, scoop, scoop, but it's actually not that often times. 
headlands and base, just basic terminology, basic uh, wave physics, wave cut platforms and erosion processes on the shoreline. I'll cover some of that stuff. Okay, so caves, arches, stacks, and stumps. So what happens basically is a crack forms in, in the cliffside and then the waves crashing against it actually cause a pressure, an increase in the pressure in the, the tiny bit of air inside the crack. And it's kind of like a, a pop and it weakens the, the material. Then gradually the crack grows as it erodes away and turns into a, a big cave or, or uh, if the cave goes all the way through, it's an arch, and then eventually the arch collapses and it forms a stack. And then the stack topples over eventually, and it forms a stump. So that's a lot of what we're seeing. Rather than like a, a path or a gap or, you know, linear gaps, as I was saying, it's oftentimes just natural stuff. This is just a uh, kind of like this slideshow. This is like a general overview of processes involved in coastal formation deltas you know where the river meets the ocean You've got a lot of rich dynamic processes going on yeah i don't know how much i'm, I'm, I'm how much of this i'm going to read you read to you Hmm. I mean, really what I want to do is just post all these links and have you go through them, but that's not super feasible. It, it would take a, a whole week probably to, to read through everything, and I don't, I don't want you to have to do that. Um, what to be said? This was a, a laboratory experiment at a university. And it's basically just showing, it's a wave table, small scale, just in a room, just sand and water, basically. And you, you see the formation of these patterns that basically are very similar to what you see on the, a larger scale in a, in a real river. And it's a, it's a good proof of concept uh, that a lot of seemingly uh, clean cut or abrupt features can form and they're they're totally natural rather than artificial so this is the the concept of how the uh the cliffs at the ocean at the shoreline uh retreat over time and erode so this arch would be a good good example of this type of phenomenon rather than you know some type of vehicle going traveling through the the rock This video gives a good illustration of how a cliff erodes. So beach ridges is what I was going to cover, but my conclusion now is that most likely, in most if not all cases, these what I was calling streaks are in fact natural, which should be the default assumption. I was just, it's not as if I took one look at the coastline one day and was like, oh my God, everything's artificial. It's actually that I saw plenty of examples of blatantly artificial stuff. And then after that, 
I started questioning some of the, the completely natural looking stuff such as this, which is striking visually, but yeah, I think some people think I <laughs> went into Speculationville without any reason to go there or just, you know, to toot my own horn or whatever. But I only started questioning this stuff because of blatantly artificial stuff that pretty much no one can argue. And this is not an example of that. This is what I started questioning after I saw the more blatant examples. Streaks again, aka beach ridges, aka coastal dunes in some cases. Some good images here. And I'm actually still going to do a, a video on streaks, beach ridges, just for reference. While most likely natural, they are still a part of the picture of the formation of Earth's surface. So I still feel it's worth it to do a, a presentation on beach ridges, which you can skip if you want. Okay, let me read you the definition here. A beach ridge is a wave-swept or wave-deposited ridge running parallel to a shoreline. It is commonly composed of sand as well as sediment worked from underlying beach material. The movement of sediment by wave action is called littoral transport. Movement of material parallel to the shoreline is called longshore transport. Movement perpendicular to the shore is called on-offshore transport. A beach ridge may be capped by or associated with sand dunes. The height of a beach ridge is affected by wave size and energy. A fall in water level or an uplift of land can isolate a beach ridge from the body of water that created it. Isolated beach ridges may be found along dry lakes in the western United States and inland of the Great Lakes of North America where they formed at the end of the last ice age when the lake levels were much higher due to glacial melting and obstructed outflow caused by glacial ice. Some isolated beach ridges are found in parts of Scandinavia where glacial melting relieved pressure on land masses and resulted in subsequent crustal lifting or post-glacial rebound. A rise in water level can submerge beach ridges created at an earlier stage causing them to erode and become less distinct. Beach ridges can become routes for roads and trails. So that could account for some of the artificial features we're seeing intermingled with the, the beach ridges. Obviously, modern activity is going to do whatever it's going to do on top of old patterns. I do find it interesting that they mention like specific places as locations for the beach ridges when they're obviously ubiquitous and occurring pretty much everywhere along the coast and lakes so it's pretty interesting uh, here's another insight into what beach ridges are beach ridges are linear mound shaped sand deposits roughly paralleling a coast ridge crests have elevations well above mean high tide and the bottoms of the adjacent troughs or swales have elevations not far from mean low tide. Their constituent clasts range in size from very fine sand to pebbles. The mineralogic composition of the clasts is dependent on the nature of local materials, although Corsofeld's pathic sand is the most common. Most ridges have relief measured in meters, widths measured in tens of meters, and lengths measured in kilometers. And then it goes on to describe multiple different variations on the structure. Here's an interesting example of, of the streaks or beach ridges. Uh, you see these fairly well-defined ridges or grooves. This was just an article talking about how the uh, how different artifacts and uh, yeah stuff like this are um, are found in different ridges. So the ridges are like a date, 
So the younger ridges are co closer to the coast and the older ridges are farther back and younger ridges are shallower um, and they get bigger back here, a couple meters high or something like that. So this place in Alaska, Cape Cruisenstern, in the 1950s it was excavated, um, all 114 beach ridges. It's about three miles wide, uh, all of the ridges and they uncovered the remains of six distinct cultures, each with their own history and language and traditions. And it paints a picture of uh, the last 5,000 years and how uh, the ridges evolved and how humans evolved with the ridges. So that just helps us to date these streaks or beach ridges. I don't know if I need to take you through all of this. It's also called a strand plane. So this is the streaks I was talking about. Get a good look at it there. And pretty striking, but not necessarily artificial. I, you know, I was thinking it might be, but after researching the, the explanation, I, I just think, no, it's more likely natural. Although we, we still are seeing the artificial stuff that spans continents, so it's not it's not out of the question to consider that it might be artificial, but I'm not so confident anymore. So let me read you what a strand plane is. A strand plane is a broad belt of sand along a shoreline with a surface exhibiting well-defined parallel or semi-parallel sand ridges separated by shallow swales. A strand plain differs from a barrier island in that it lacks either the lagoons or tidal marshes that separate a barrier island from the shoreline to which the strand plain is directly attached. Also, the tidal channels and inlets which cut through barrier islands are absent. Strand planes typically are created by the redistribution of waves in longshore currents of coarse sediment on either side of a river mouth. Thus, they are part of one type of wave-dominated delta. This was a, an article, a study that uh, it mentions that, again, the, the ridges record uh, history of an area, younger ridges up front and older ridges in the back, and you can s take samples of the ridges to see different historical eras, apparently. And also this was specul er, exploring the idea that the ridges are partially due to tropical cyclones.